And like we talked about earlier, when um when they escaped from the island before the volcano blew up and the Brachiosaurus was left there by itself. And yes, on like as an isolated scene by itself, it's a very well put together scene. It's a it's an emotional moment. It's very nice. However, it contradicts the past events that happened literally five minutes ago. You are you. It it feels like tonal whiplash. Like you're trying to make us feel bad about these dinosaurs, but we just spent over twenty minutes of the humans running away from the dinosaurs, and you want us to feel bad for them now. And it's like, but but the black but brachiosauruses are trying to eat the humans, so it's not the same thing. The same principle is there. They're trying to save all the dinosaurs. They didn't talk about we're only going to save the plant-eating ones. We want to save all of them, even the dinosaurs that eat humans. So that logic makes no sense. Either you want us to feel bad for the dinosaurs or you don't. Don't have us spend most of the movie fearing for them and then put in these random sentimental moments of, oh, we need to feel bad for them. It's too little too late at this point because, I once again, we are five movies in and the dinosaurs are still a problem. But I guess I will say this. I feel like, you know, um, our characters, our main characters feel the same way for dinosaurs in the way that they feel for, um, you know, animals that are, you know, common animals that we see today. Um, because in their reality, in their world of the Jurassic world, um, <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic environment, you know, like that reality, the movie's right. reality, yeah. um, they're not extinct anymore, you know, so they're living animals. So, you know, I feel like if there, you know, was some sort of random event that took place where you know all of the lions in you know africa need to be saved and we have to you know rally up a team to go and save them and move them to a safer environment or whatever um you'd be putting yourself in danger but you'd still want to save the lions right because i would i like lions i think they're really fascinating and cool and we can learn a lot from them so yeah so i guess like in that sense it's like yeah you're putting yourself in a lot of danger because they have these natural hunter like instincts you know they they're they're predators um and that's just what they do and they don't understand that they're being saved or anything but like you know just like every animal would react but um you know deep down they knew what they were doing and they knew what they were getting themselves into but except i guess the newbies that you don't like but (laughs) it's it so it's 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 that it's that argument right there where it's like i guess it because you're not wrong (laughs) you're not wrong it's like it's hard for me to fully like argue this with people because like you can't bring that argument up that yes you we have dangerous animals here in real life where it's like you are putting yourself in danger if you try to interact with it but you still want to save them because they're fascinating creatures and they're all part of the great circle of life but it's like the, the why the reason why I'm like I'm not as lenient about it at this point anymore because like I'm gonna this is gonna I'm gonna keep saying this over and over again they like with with the we the animals that we have now, you don't see incidents like this happening so many times. You know, like they deal with the dinosaurs, right? We have figured out a way as society to figure out a way to you know be able to um, live with these other animals. You know, we're able to make a you know bond connection and stuff like that because they're supposed to be here. They're part of the evolution that we are in right now. The fact that they know that they are messing with the natural the, the laws of physics. They're messing with the natural order. Mm-hmm. And nature is biting back 
they are suffering the consequences numerous times. And it's like, you, it's, you can't compare the dinosaurs to the animals that we have now. You know, because the dinosaurs are much more dangerous than the animals that we have now. As Malcolm said in the movie, if we aren't careful, they will become the most dominant species on the planet. So you're Team Malcolm. I was Team Malcolm since the first movie. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and once again, they have not given me a valid argument to why I should think otherwise. Mm. And it's like, I know, okay, in Jurassic World universe, the humans think the way they do. So it's like, okay. But it's like, in their own logic, like, them trying to control these dinosaurs is not working. It's not working. <laughs> and you think just because you're going to bring these dinosaurs to another island, that another incident won't happen again? It's just they have become liabilities at this point. <laughs> liabilities. Like, you, uh, because just because they bring them to another island doesn't mean there's going to be other hunters that won't try again and take them off the island again. But if it weren't for human error, there'd be no more movies. <laughs> again! And Maybe? that's why this shouldn't be a franchise! This franchise should have ended after the first Jurassic World. <laughs> it should have been done. And then talking about the genetic, going back real quickly to the, well, actually, well, I'll, I'll say that for later. But like, that's just, that's just, I just don't understand. How am I supposed to feel? How am I supposed to feel? Am I supposed to be afraid of them? Am I supposed to love them? Am I supposed to let them die? Or should we let them live? Is it a good idea to keep them alive even though they are in danger to the human species? Like, well, how am I supposed to feel? How am I supposed to feel? This movie's driving me nuts. <laughs> I have one thing to say, do Go I? ahead, please. They're alive just like you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought your head was gonna explode. I was like, oh no, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I'm sorry everyone. Let me let me keep my composure. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was Man. beautiful. I loved that. <laughs> that was so much fun. We haven't even got to the worst part. <laughs> That's the worst part. But um What's all the right. worst part? The oh. mansions! The mansions shit! Yeah. The, the mansion shit. Alright. Let's get to it. So as we said, I I personally think it's completely idiotic that um that Lockwood was never aware that they are doing auctions for dinosaurs in his basement in his mansion. I'm surprised he's not aware of it at all, regardless of how sick he is, because apparently he's, you know, he's mobile enough to take care of his granddaughter or be aware of what his granddaughter is doing to an extent. Not everything, but to an extent. So if that's the case, this is like you should be aware that people are in your house with genetically modified monsters. Like, I just, just so stupid. Like, it's weird. This movie feels backwards because, like, it feels like the climax started at the beginning of the movie with the volcano sequence. That felt like the climax. But the rest of the movie, we are in this mansion, and the pacing just goes to a complete halt. And then the logic just goes even more crazy. So, as we said, they are auctioning off these dinosaurs. So these, so like these big corporations can do. I, I don't know. I guess they're <laughs> gonna try and modify their own dinosaurs, even though don't they need engine to do that? I just, I don't they've know. They've got, they've got the original scientists. I think that that's how Doctor Wu. Uh, yeah. So I think that that's how they kind of developed that their reasoning. Okay. I but yeah, I guess. Um, When's the last time you've seen this movie? Oh, uh, with this one? Yeah. 
Oh, I watched it a couple days ago. Oh, okay. I saw it yeah. like a couple weeks ago, so I think I'm a bit rusty. My bad. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Like, I'm still but... trying to, like, I watched it more recently, and I'm, there's still, like, plot points, like, wait, why? Wait, why are they doing this? Like, yeah. Okay. okay. But, um, I so forgot Doc... about the, honestly, the first half hour of this movie, I blank out every time. <laughs> oh, it's the it's the mansion part no, that but... just like gets your blood get your blood boiling. <laughs> Stop oh boy, tapping your toes. <laughs> exactly. Um. So Doctor Wu comes back. Um. They did allude that he was going to have a bigger role. Um. And not really. It's pretty much the same amount of screen time and development that he got from the first Jurassic World. Um. Except he's a little bit more maniacal now. Ex- but at the same time, he's regretting his decisions because the corporation people aren't taking the, the necessary steps to make sure that the, that the dinosaurs are genetically modified the way they're supposed to. What a shock! That big corporations don't care about the steps. They just care about the end result. They want the money. Of course that's how it is. Uh, okay. Not much to say about Wu. You got anything to say about Wu? I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna kill him. Maybe in the third one. I don't know. Or, or, um, if please, please, please don't continue after Dominion. But if they continue after Dominion, then his role will be even bigger, and they'll actually do the modified dinosaur plot point because that seems to be completely abandoned at this point. What they were setting up with Vincent D'Onofrio's character in the first film and them slightly touching on it in this one, completely abandoned for the fact that we just want to see the dinosaurs roam free in the Earth. What was the point? Unless that's what they're setting up for Jurassic World 7. Please don't make a Jurassic World 7. Like, Jurassic Park 7, Jurassic World 3, wait, 4, Jurassic World 4, Jurassic Park 7. No! Jurassic Land 1. Jurassic Land. <laughs> Jurassic Land. <laughs> Another trilogy. No, Jurassic Land. It's like Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. Jurassic, Jurassic Land. <laughs> and they make like, they make another park and it actually works this time. It and it's out. actually in the country like it's in Florida and California, like uh, yeah. Disney World and Universal. Yeah, Anaheim. <laughs> right next to Disneyland. And what and they're like- using... They're using the the dinosaurs in like the war with the Navy and the soldiers and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, but because it works out, um, it's pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, Jurassic I'm, Land. Jurassic Land. Oh, I, I hope they. I hope they're not watching this. Please don't take notes on this. Don't 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 do it. Don't you do it, Universal? I swear. But if you uh, do, you owe me credit. So yes, you 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 owe us um <laughs> creative uh credits. We want a portion of money. I came and, up with uh, it first, or free tickets royalties. to Universal. Yes, free tickets to Orlando. Universal for a year. For life, for life, life for life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they'll I don't know if they'll be that gracious, but uh royalties will be nice. But um. So that whole thing is there. They captured Blue, by the way. They um, what? Yeah, they did. Well, okay. Yeah, they they did capture Blue. Owen, Franklin, Claire, and Zia get up, end up being on the sh- the the ship where they have all the dinosaurs there. Very convenient how they were able to get all the dinosaurs they did with all the volcano eruption stuff happening. But okay. So as we, Blue got shot by one of the hunters, and um, he needs a blood transplant, and the the only blood that will be able to save blue is T Rex blood, cause that's how that works. But like they also said that her blood was also like, um, what was the word they called it? It wasn't pure anymore pure. cause she's T Rex blood. But like. Aren't they all somehow like related to each? I don't know. I don't remember. Poking but more holes. <laughs> they were all somehow related to each other, right? Because they're all—they're not like their own species. They're 
replicas of the species that they used to be 65 million years ago so like yeah you know they're part lizard and you know whatever chicken you know like they're they're part animals that we have now to make them replicas of what they used to be uh, aside from you know the dna that they got from oh wait yeah because the dna that they got from the mosquitoes mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Uh, <laughs> from the mosquitoes and then they filled it in with like lizards and chickens or whatever you know so yeah like whatever uh portion of the dna that they were missing so i don't know i guess maybe but i i didn't understand the plot point all that much but... uh, no but i guess that led to as a sequence of them trying to get blood from the t-rex lots of sleep which i guess that was another kind of thrilling sequence and i think there are some practical effects with the t-rex head there that looked i good. like that scene yeah it was good it was suspenseful it was suspenseful um, okay, so we, we've waited long enough. Let's talk about this Indoraptor. Oh, yeah. My favorite. What the actual hell is this mm. thing? And I know what I'm about to say. It's a prototype. It's a prototype. It's not supposed to be perfect. Okay, that's, that's great. That's great. That's, that's fine. But it like... is, though, because that is the only time we see the Indoraptor is the thing so in terms of like filmmaking they're presenting the audience the only opportunity to see the indoraptor so that's the indoraptor to us it doesn't matter if it's just a prototype you know Mm -hmm. that's the indoraptor also it would probably only affect its like mood realistic like that's my assumption that like prototype versus like you know the actual final product like i feel like it's you know it's discipline would be the only change you know it's obedience i guess so anyway Um, it looks stupid yeah i hate this thing i hate it so much oh my gosh um so it's i guess it's supposed to be a miniature version of the indominus rex even though it does not camouflage it does not change its temperature it's supposed to be a better hunter i guess um even though when it's trying to chase after owen claire and um macy it's doing a terrible job of doing that first of all it's supposed to sniff people out it's supposed to have hide senses like that, but like Lily, the Indoraptor doesn't realize that Owen, Claire, and Macy are right below them when the Indoraptor is on top of one of those statues or whatever. And then you talked about it earlier with that whole clicking thing that he does with his feet. I hated that so much. It made no sense. It did not serve any purpose except for calling back to the previous movies. Right. And it was over and over and over and over again. Where they did it they did it at least three times. I like, count it. It was so annoying. Like what is the point of that? Like it's not blind. Why would it be clicking it like that? That's supposed to be that's that type of stuff is for people that can't see. Like they use the clicking stuff and so they'll be able to sense the room better. But like it's not blind. It can see. And it's supposed to have night vision, I think, as well. And they're in the dark, and he can't see shit. Like what? <laughs> and then it's supposed to be a more agile dinosaur, right? Like, but like when it's chasing Macy throughout the mansion, it is clumsily crashing into everything that it comes in contact with, and it's clumsily trying to get up the stairs when Macy is running up the stairs. What? But Dwayne, and- it's just a prototype. <laughs> Why are you showing a prototype at an auction when it's not ready? Because they want money. That's that's the human way in these movies. People will always want money. Oh my god. And then on top of that, as you said, the design of this thing looks stupid. It's black and yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. It's creepy. It just doesn't look like a dinosaur is the thing. And I know that that's their point, but it's like, it's just, there are times where it's like, you know, like the Indominus was kind of scary because you're like, whoa, that's not a dinosaur. It's so unpredictable. You know, like, 
But like once they, you know, introduced the Indoraptor, it just at yet another like non-dinosaur type of thing. You're like, all right, get out of here. Like no one cares about you. Go away. Like go like, away. You know. If I wanted kaiju monsters, I would watch Godzilla versus Kong. Like no. This is Jurassic Park. We don't need these weird ass looking creatures. Yeah. Like uh, no. Um and then get out of here. Uh, get, get out of here. <laughs> Ugh. And then, I thought the gymnastic sequence <laughs> in the world was pretty terrible, but they tried to one up themselves in this movie. So when the Indoraptor first breaks free, and he's in that cage that all the dinosaurs are in when uh, they're doing the auction or whatever, and the one hunter dude. Let me pull up his name, even though I don't care. Ken um, comes in. Okay, stupidly, Ken likes to, like, collect dinosaurs' teeth. Like, he yeah. keeps, like, pulling teeth out of the, the dinosaurs cause for a collection. Like, okay, weird. So he decides to go in and be like, I want my money because I brought the dinosaurs back. I where's my money? And he goes into the, the, the auction facility, and the, and the Indoraptor's just laying there playing dead in the cage. And then he decides... I'm going to take the teeth of one of those dinosaurs. Um, first of all, who at, who told you that you could pull teeth out of uh, the, the, the dinosaurs that they're trying to auction off? Why would you do that? But okay. So he tries to pick the teeth off of that. When he's about to do this, like, I think you remember when we saw this in the theater, I literally looked at you. I'm like, are, are you serious right now? Is this <laughs> what? When he's about to pull the teeth out of the dinosaur, he and that he doesn't do this one time. He does it twice. The Indoraptor opens his eye and smiles at the camera and is like, "I'm about to get this fool." <laughs> he doesn't know. He does it twice. He smiles at the camera and then he eats his arm. Also, that was such a. It reminded me so much of in Jurassic Park 3 when like the raptors were setting traps for people like you know they set it, it was a raptor posing um like in, in front of the, the reflection of the tube, of the tube. Yeah. yeah and like it you know it was like one of the raptors like uh not only like tricking the humans but it was kind of setting up the fact that they know more than the humans think and they're on to the humans ways and you know, stuff like that. So, you know, they had that same personality for the Indoraptor and it just felt like another like, okay, let's just copy and paste what we saw before and add it into the personality of the Indoraptor and make him super cool. But it's like, it just felt annoying at that point because now he's just a, a poser. <laughs> it feels like. <laughs> and again, like the... Like the physics and the logic of these movies. Like, why? I don't care if it's genetically modified. Why would a creature like that look at the camera and smile? Are we fourth wall breaking now? Have we become self aware? Is this a joke to them now? They should just set it up like The Office. They could just have the dinosaurs like do a roll interviews. Just like cut to their interviews. <laughs> they can have like like <laughs> screenshots. Just pause. They just be like, yep, that's me. <laughs> Halfway through the fight scenes. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't probably wonder what got here. <laughs> oh, this movie's terrible, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Anvil just falling on people. <laughs> <laughs> They're running. I'm literally waiting for that. Sets. Huh? I'm literally waiting for that. Like, yeah, special, like, like st stupid, like, goofy effects like this. Like, yeah, they're running super fast, but they're not moving. And then all of a sudden they go, leaving like a cloud shaped version of them. <laughs> a cloud them oh, silhouette. Oh my lord. <laughs> So, let's, yeah, let's just go big on this. Go big or go home, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, 
Blue Blue uh, eventually gets saved by Zia and um, Franklin from uh, Doctor Wu trying to help him escape from the laboratory. I think, and uh, then eventually, I think I don't remember. I don't care. I have watched this movie a couple of days ago, but um, well, not a couple of days, probably like three, three, four days ago. But um, but then it leads to a fight with Blue versus the Indoraptor. I'm like, mm-hmm. what the heck? What what in the what? Up on the they're up on the on the on the um the roof of the house, and it's and it's raining, and then oh look, another cool shot for the trailer. We have the Indoraptor on top of the roof, and it's raining, and the moon is doing this cool silhouette in the lightning storm. That'll be a cool shot for the trailer, even though logically it makes no goddamn sense. But hey, um, and then like yeah, it gets to the fight in the mansion. Okay, I guess it's kind of entertaining if you're a kaiju monster fan. I'm a kaiju monster fan, and I don't care about this shit. But like they have to do that, um. But okay, and then it leads to like I think Blue and the Indoraptor was on top of something, and then he made the Indoraptor fall into like a a spear from a statue or something like that, and it killed it that way. Yeah, it's the um, it was like a horn. A horn, yeah. Yeah, they were on top of like I think they had like a sunroof type of thing for the art gallery in the house in the mansion. Yeah, or it was you know like um not an art gallery but like a. It's like what they have. Like a mu- it looks like a museum yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. Museum is better. Museum. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And okay. They tricked it because they had that thing where like the laser, and then you point the laser at someone, and then you send off the signal to attack. So the Indoraptor went to attack. It's just a prototype. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Died. All right. Um, okay, one thing that's kind of a little bit off subject, but I forgot to talk about this. Um, sorry, I'm all over the place, but this movie's all over the place. Um, mm-hmm. the, okay, so remember when the first movie that Claire and Owen were supposed to be together? Yeah. And they just completely abandoned. They, like, they forget about them. They They broke up. In between the first one, the second one, I'm like, "Wow, I love when movies do that." When that they- was annoying because I knew that they were going to have to like start off from the very beginning, just like they did in the first Jurassic World, and then we're gonna have to watch them reconnect and then get back together. So if they do that again, it's like, yeah, it's like we know they're gonna end up back together again. Oh, yeah. So why are we going through this again? Yeah, I like... hate when movies do that. <sighs> anyway, that's a little thing. All right, this twist with Macy. Oh boy. So, so, oh my gosh. So, apparently, um, Macy. The big twist with Macy, because they're like trying to, they're making this whole elaborate thing of, oh, there's something very special about her lineage and stuff like that, or something secret with her, right? So apparently, Macy is Is a dinosaur. Yes. (laughs) She she is a dinosaur. She can morph into a dinosaur. But uh, no, no, seriously. She's a genetically modified human. And... She's a clone. She's a clone. Okay, this is we're in Star Wars now. Um, why? Why? Why do we have a genetically modified human? Why do we have a clone? Why is Macy a clone? I guess they you oh. could kind of allude to the fact that I guess they're using her. They, she was like an experiment for like when they were making the dinosaurs. Like I guess she was a test subject to see how. That could possibly be, you know, they can go further with that. But, like, what? Stop the brakes right... Oh, sorry, go ahead. She would be a test subject for, like, when they first started cloning dinosaurs or when they first started creating dinosaurs because that was in 93. That was in the 90s, right? Right. So maybe it's probably for, like, the new stuff that they're doing with the Yeah. 
So I think it was probably like he still had the developmental technology from his days in Jurassic Park. So he was able to because he still had the resources. So as soon as her his daughter died, I think in the accident, he cloned her. Okay. From then on, because she would have been older than me, I think. Yeah, she would have been older than me. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Yeah. So this whole thing with her being a clone. Um, this is a new scientific discovery. Like, let's forget about the fact that you created dinosaurs. You created another human life form. Can we talk about that for a second? A next stage in evolution? Like, why aren't they trying to make money with that? You created a human. This is not something you should be, like, ignoring. <laughs> or just be like, oh, yeah, we made, a, we made a clone. Whatever. It's about the dinosaur. No! Like, why? Why? What? 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 <laughs> why? I don't what? know. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this just, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. There's no reason to put this in here. There's no reason. It just felt too bold of them. This want to be shocking. But here's the problem with that. You want to be shocking about this. But here's the thing. We don't know Macy enough as a character for us to care. Yeah. Well, were they trying to maybe like trick the audience? Where they're like, okay, let's get to know this character as a human being first and then see what you think about you know the dinosaurs after you find out that macy's the exact same situation you know was it that or am i just giving them way too much credit it could be that and they probably failed miserably it will no no they did fail miserably but like or is it just a twist it probably is everything. It's probably all of it. All you, everything you just said. They probably, they probably were hoping one of those things would stick, but none that's of all I could think of. That's all. That's the only message I was getting from Macy's twist. Like okay, this, yeah. Like it probably. Kind of teach me a lesson. What, what lesson are you teaching? That's the thing. Like you have so many lessons and you're not sticking with one. That. Like, you, a living ahead. creature is a living creature, and you must respect them and help them. Basically, they're alive just like you, Dwayne. <laughs> you're trying to make my blood pressure go up again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Whew. We just have we should have like a cuff on you or something just to see <laughs> when I say that, does it just beep like crazy? Let's just go on. Oh boy. <laughs> But yeah. This bullshit's over 9,000! Anyway. Honestly, I felt more of like an environmental respect when watching like Jurassic Park than this one. It felt like this one, they were so eager to send out this message of environmentalism and respect and how we don't have control of the natural world and we should just, you know aid it if we can and or as much as we can and like you know or and then just respect it and respect how the natural world goes and stuff and it just felt like to me they they were so desperate to like send out that message that it almost felt like it wasn't as impactful for me watching this than it was than the environmentalism message was in Jurassic Park because that's one of the reasons why I like the Jurassic Park series is that like it's got this like environmental lesson behind it and you know this acknowledgement that we as human beings should have humility in the sense that we're not in control of the natural world and because they were so like we gotta throw all this stuff at you like all of these messages at you right now like it just doesn't it didn't feel that way to me it, it wasn't it just it wasn't as powerful to me i don't know 
No, it wasn't. It felt too obvious and didn't make me think, you know? Right. Or they're making me think for the wrong reasons. I think that, yeah, I think they they thought for me in this plot, you know? I don't know. That's kind of how I felt. Yeah, no, I totally, I totally felt that. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, because, like, so, so the ending of this movie, when there's some, there's some gas that, that, like, breaks into, in the laboratory facility where all the dinosaurs are being kept, um, probably from an accident from Blue in the laboratory, right? And they're all about to die. And, um, conveniently, there is a giant red button in the facility that will let all the dinosaurs free outside. And they are trying to grasp, you know, they're trying to make a decision right then and there. Like, should we let all the dinosaurs just die or should we set them free? And in, okay, so here's here's what really just set it off, like, for me. Because that was one of the few moments, well, probably one of the only moments in the movie that, like, felt very mature for a Jurassic Park film. Because at that moment they're put in this situation where it's like they have to make a decision now, you know, that will impact the rest of the world. And I thought for a slight moment, a slight moment that Owen and Claire and everyone were going to make the right decision and be like, we just need to let them die because after all the stuff that happened, it's the best thing to make sure that humanity is not in danger anymore. And they actually, actually, they do make that decision. They're almost about to be like, "Yeah, we just we gotta let them die." It's gonna be sad, but it's for it's for the best of mankind. However, that whole entire moment is completely shat on <laughs> when Macy clicks the red button and sets them free. And the reason why she sets them free. Is because they're real, just like her. They're both genetically modified, but they're real. They're alive, like her. So that means they have every right to thrive on the same planet as we do. Even though moments before, these are the same species that were trying to eat you. Fuck this movie. That, that, after all the shit that we had to sit through for two plus hours, and like, okay, I'm expecting them to figure out a way for them to set the dinosaurs free. Mm -hmm. My issue is not mainly with that. Even though I don't like it, I knew it was coming, but that's not even my main issue of them doing that. The way that they're doing it felt, made this movie a waste of time. Yeah. It was a waste of time. So it's like there could have been a more elaborate way of them to let the dinosaurs free where it doesn't make the main characters look stupid. You yeah. could have had the corporation set them free. You could have, it could have just been an accident. But once again, they're they're the, the when you said that it feels like the movie is trying to tell us how we're supposed to feel, it's what this is one of these moments where it artificially is trying to make us tell us how we're supposed to feel, even though the movie is showing us something completely different. Mm -hmm. At this point, I don't care about the dinosaurs' lives because they have threatened our lives much more times. <laughs> so, like, it's just. You went. You made us go through all this BS in this movie, only for it, it to resort to this little artificial girl setting them free. Like, it, I, yeah, I feel like she is the most unlikable character in the franchise now because <laughs> she threatens humanity. She's the one. She threatened humanity now. Yeah. Why am I supposed to like this character? Why am I supposed to care for this character? You endangered humanity now. You put humanity in danger. Humanity may possibly go extinct because you had some resemblance of sympathy because you're both genetically created even though you're not a giant freaking monster that eats people.
fuck. Yeah. If she dies in Dominion, I will not care. I she will won't. not care. She probably she won't, won't, and it'll make me even more angry. But, like... I think that, you know what's weird about, like, this upcoming generation of, like, films coming in? Um, like, think about Star Wars, um, The Last Jedi, uh, where... Um, Finn was gonna sacrifice himself for the, um, you know, what's the left of the resistance. Yeah. And that would have been so cool, you know, a, a stormtrooper turned resistance leader, practically, sacrificing himself for, you know, the, the last of the resistance. Like, that would have been a really cool character moment, but I feel like well, first of all, I'm really glad they didn't kill him off because I think he's my favorite character in the entire, like, new Star Wars. Ben. But, yeah, but that would have been a really cool moment because, like, but I, I think that, like, these new films, for some reason, they have a hard time letting go of things. Um, and I think for this purpose specifically... Um, you know, if you were to kill the dinosaurs off, then it would have solved the problem. It wouldn't have been opening the doors literally for another movie. And that's the whole reason why they had all the dinosaurs come on to, you know, the continental U.S. And, you know, hang out in Vegas and, you know, storm up some, you know, outdoor drive up, drive in theaters, you know, and stuff. <laughs> because, like... You know, they, they wanted to set it up for yet another movie where that stuff would happen. But, like, I don't know. I just, I'm noticing that, like, these, a lot of new films that I've been seeing lately have been having, like, a hard time letting people go, if that makes sense. I think, like, Endgame, people were nonstop talking about it because it's, like, well... Not only because it was, like, such a big, mo like, monumental moment in Marvel, but it probably because, like, you know, we had Iron Man go, and we had, you know, like, some characters go, like, um, Black Widow, and we were like, oh my gosh, it was so, like, mentally devastating, because I don't think we've had a lot of films in any franchise lately just let something go, you know? Um... Yeah. yeah, that's also another thing. I wonder if they're going to kill any like main characters. Are is Grant going to die? I hope not. But I think the only person that will probably, if they're going to kill people off, I think Alan would probably be the one. But I don't think they're going to oh. kill any of them. I don't think they're going to kill any of them. You don't think so? I don't think so. I just don't think that it'll. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think it'll happen. But hope not. they introduce new characters specifically to kill them is the thing. Yeah. So. Hey, I don't know. That's, yeah. Have you noticed that? I don't know About if what? I've, like, if I'm just, like, making that up in my head, but I'm kind of noticing that, where it's like, you think someone's gonna die, and then they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Ray could have died. You think Ray could have died? Yeah, she could have died. Well, well, okay, my thing is with the sequel trilogy, though, I feel like they, they created new characters so they can kill off the legacy characters, which is exactly what they did. So, yeah, they but it took forever for them to kill off Princess Leia, even though they could have, but because, you know, the actress died, but they didn't. You know, she well, was on for another movie and a half, I think. Yeah, the reason being was because, like, um, they were trying to have, like, the... They were trying to have each movie like a legacy character be like uh like a so, some sort of a mentor like for each movie. So it's like Force Awakens was Han, uh, Last Jedi was Luke, and then they were planning Leia to be like the one that ends with Rise of Skywalker. Hmm. But um, but they didn't they didn't they didn't know that you know Carrie Fisher was going to pass away and stuff like that. So that's why they didn't. I feel like they should have just yeah. I, they should have had. Leia probably die in Last Jedi and then keep 
Luke for right the Skywalker from. That's, I thought that they were gonna do that. I thought that they were yeah. gonna replace her kind of position as like a, a mentor um with Luke and then we were going to see some relation between Poe and Luke. Anyway, I don't know. I think I'm just making it up in my head that like I mean, I, they wouldn't introduce new characters just to kill them off. I think their intention is like they're introducing these new characters so they can pass pass it on to the next generation. They'll be the new characters we follow going forward. In Star Wars, yeah, but in in Jurassic Park, I feel like you know we introduced um, in the first one. There's um, Hoskins, who was yeah. like the military guy, and you know he died. And then the owner of Jurassic World, he dies. So, like, I think that they introduced new characters, like, in Dominion, all of these new people, like Eli and stuff like that, they die. But none of the OG characters from Jurassic World, like, um, or Jurassic Park, because there's, um, you know, uh, the scientist, uh, you know, they, they all live. And I have a feeling that they're going to live in this next one. Unless maybe they kill... I mean, they could kill off Henry Wu. Who knows? I, I feel like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Wu and Alan, I think, were probably the only two I would see them killing off. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe Wu has... Because he's been there for all of Jurassic World. So maybe. Maybe. They, like, maybe uh, they're setting him up. But... We'll see. We'll see. <sighs> okay. Well, uh, so the movie ends with all the dinosaurs roaming free around the world, and uh, that's the setup for Dominion, as we already know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, I, I, and then they have the ending monologue with Malcolm, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. To, it's cool. We got Malcolm to end, like, end the movie, I guess. But like. <sighs> It just, I, I just was confused and angry after that. Like, just like, what are we doing right now? What, this is what you're setting up for the, okay. I think uh, my okay. confusion really was like, when you see that, like after credits shot with the pterodactyls. Oh yeah, pterodactyls and, yeah. And I'm like, this is just crazy. <laughs> this is just crazy. Like, yeah. I feel like I don't know. Maybe maybe we all knew this was gonna happen. Well, but... yeah, I, I knew. Like, if they were gonna continue, there were either two scenarios. One, they well, probably three scenarios. One, they're going to do a, the plot point with the genetically modified dinosaurs, and you're gonna see them militarized. Two, they're gonna figure out a way to um, create a park in the country, like Disney World and Universal. Or three, they're just gonna set the dinosaurs free across the world, and then the humans will have to deal with it in a post-apocalyptic type type of thing. Uh, well, I, yeah, not... I knew that they had to have done like a post-apocalyptic type of like thing before they killed off the franchise. I just didn't think it happened so soon. But... Exactly. But uh, yeah, man. Um... That's all I got for this movie. Anything else you want to bring up before we do grades and close it out? <laughs> Bruh. I don't know. I feel like I feel so like wiped out mentally just thinking about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've never analyzed a movie with so much confusion before. <laughs> I know. Like as I said, this is one of the most illogical films I have seen in years. Every time one problem comes up, another one adds on top of it. Like, just yeah, it was a lot of up for like, okay, we just have to convince the audience that this is like, it's almost like when you're playing a game with like a little kid and you're like, um, you know, you're like wizards or something, you know, because I have a wand. And you're yeah. like, Zap, I just killed you. And the kid's just like, no, because I have full immunity. And like, you know, changing up the whole thing while you're playing. Like, that's kind of yeah. how it felt like to me. Where it's like, okay, just accept what we're telling you right now. Just accept what, what we're saying here. Just go with it for like five minutes, okay? Like, in order to keep the plot going. You know what I mean? Yep. Honestly, this should have... <laughs> 
Yeah, fine, I guess. <laughs> fine. I mean, it's not fine. Everything's on fire, but it's fine. Um, it's like that meme with the with the dog in the in the house with the house on fire. Everything's this fine. Is fine. Yep. This is fine. <laughs> um, this should have killed the franchise, to be honest. But somehow, this movie made a billion dollars too. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> how many times did you see, how many times did you saw this in theaters, Shannon? Well, only once, but okay. and I got it because I worked in a theater. But like, <laughs> I, I would definitely say like, I mean, I support this franchise because I love dinosaurs. I love watching people running from dinosaurs. It's suspenseful, you know. But like, I mean, yeah, they could. I there's not. I, I feel like because I love the first Jurassic Park so much that like i don't know they could do like they could hand me like the dumbest home movie with zero you know with a with no budget or anything and i'd be like thanks <laughs> but so you haven't been you haven't it been won't jaded. last yeah. It wouldn't last that long if they continuously hand me terrible terrible movies or anything like I'd be pretty, like, I'd be like, okay, goodbye, you know? But I really like Jurassic World. I really like Jurassic Park, so... And you like Jurassic Park 3. And I like Jurassic Park 3. So I feel like, you know, I'm okay with getting a couple stingers every once in a while. I'm, and I'm hoping this one's going to be great, because I was really, really hoping to see the, these characters come together and work together. So, um... I hope that they don't ruin it. <laughs> I'm gonna go see it. Yeah, I'm gonna go see it because uh, gotta review it. But yeah, and um, if I don't like it, it's not gonna change the fact that I really liked Jurassic Park. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, the first one's still there. But... Yeah. So yeah, overall, um, I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's horrible. It's awful. Really? I thought you loved it. Aww. Yeah, you couldn't tell by my... Yeah, I was yeah, so... this whole time. Yeah, um, but no, yeah, this is the worst. This is the worst Jurassic Park film. It might be one of the worst films I've seen. But, like, uh, it's just, I'm sorry. The, I, we love Jurassic Park 1 so much. And it's like it, the themes and like the characters are such ahead of its time. It's just so disappointing how far the writing and the logic has fallen at this at this point. And you would think with such a such an important movie like Jurassic Park, like they would try harder to make something, you know, just just to make a good movie, you know? Yeah. But it's like it's just the problem in itself is that I'm just I don't think this should have been a franchise or this shouldn't have went as long as it has, you know. Yeah, they could have stopped that world. They could have stopped that world. Like anything after that, it just feels forced. Just like Fast and Furious, it should have ended after seven. But like, I don't know. Just the logic makes no sense. The plot makes no sense. The motivations make no sense. The it's just. And it's like if they wanted to get to the whatever the the scenario they wanted to get in Dominion, like there could have been an easier and more logical way to go about it. But it's just it just felt lazy or it just felt inconsistent. Like you didn't need to put in this stuff with the, like a a clone human, genetically modified dinosaurs. It's like you bring up so many plot points and you just abandon them later on. Like I just. It's all over the place. This movie is all over the place. I don't want to watch this ever again. <laughs> I don't. If there, if I will go back and watch the the first movie, I will watch Jurassic World. I hope I can say the same thing with Dominion. And like, even though I don't like Lost World in three, this, Fallen Kingdom makes them so much more watchable now. <laughs> like you know, so it's like. Yeah, I hate this movie so much. So overall, I have to say that Jurassic World Fallen franchise is god awful. <laughs> it's god awful. I, I can't say 
in this movie. It's like an oxymoron. I never understand that phrase. Uh, the god awful. <laughs> like you should put god and awful in the same phrase. But um, so go ahead, Shannon. Tell us your final grade. I would say I really liked the acting. I thought that you know. <laughs> I like the acting. <laughs> I thought Bryce and Chris, I love them. They're two of my favorite um, performers uh, and actors. So, I, I, yeah, I really like, I don't know. I, I really like how they do it but and how they work together and how they portrayed their characters that, you know, we liked from uh, the first film. From the first Jurassic Park film, so, but it's you know it's not enough to undo the the plot errors and inconsistencies and annoyances that I got from having to watch the Indoraptor pretend to be like one of the OG raptors from Jurassic Park. Um, so, with that being said, um. Oh, and I did like the volcano scene. I thought it was pretty suspenseful to watch them, you know, go through, like, with the gyrosphere. That was pretty cool. And, like, having to get out of the gyrosphere and, like, that shot that they had inside of it. Um, you know, that was cool. So, it's not the worst film I've ever seen. But I don't care if I have to watch it again. Like, if, you know, a friend of mine were to come over and be like, we have to watch this movie. I'd be like, whatever, you know? But I wouldn't rip my eyes out and be like, okay, press play. You know what I mean? Uh, so, like, it, it wouldn't be... I could watch it again, but it would most definitely not come into my mind of things to watch. So, with that being said, in my very long answer, I would probably have to say it's around the trashy area. Maybe just a bit above trash. Aha. Uh -huh. Film is pretty much trash. Yep. That is the nicest <laughs> trash I have ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the acting. I <laughs> the liked... costumes were really great. The costumes? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you, put... <laughs> you liked the costumes that much. <laughs> the lighting, you know, I could see everything just The light. <laughs> I can see everything fine. They lit it up pretty well. Yeah, it's too dark. But say, the effects are really well done to the school. gaffer. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great. <laughs> no, not, not anywhere near. But uh, that is our l long preamble rant on Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. I think it was longer than the first time we recorded it. By like oh, yeah. Because we were like, yeah, we were like around an hour and a half with the hour and 20 minutes for the first time we recorded it. Now it's uh, two hours, 25 minutes. Yeah, it's definitely going to be split into two parts. But um, yeah, tell us your thoughts. Uh, what, what did you guys think about Falling Kingdom? Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate it? Did you guys think it was okay? Please comment your thoughts down below and let us know. All right, so we are caught up with the Jurassic World movies. So all that's left is Jurassic World Dominion. We're going to go see it, and we will give you guys our uh, thoughts when uh, it comes out. So tune in for that. But um, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I want to reach 500 subscribers. That would be so great. But uh, please, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. Um, tune in to Shannon Jeffrey's channel as well. I'll put a link to her channel. Um, she has not made a video, though, in like 15 years, but you know. <laughs> I have a short film channel now where I've uploaded all my professional short films, though. So. Cool. I'll put a link to that as well. So Thank you. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's all we have for you, Jurassic Park fans. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, I, I need a throw loud, bitch. I'm not voice. <laughs> <laughs>